What do you think is missing when you are making your characters? Is it the ability to draw the cool costume and clothes? Do you feel you lack the skill to draw anatomy or faces? Or is it something else? Something more elusive and shapeless? Something more than we ever thought possible? Something that lies deep within us all? In the shadows? Waiting? Hi, it's Dion here with another video demonstrating the process of how I'm making the horror action webcomic Jim Reel Paranormal Investigator. If you'd like to read it online, I'll leave a link in the description below, but what I really wanted to talk about today is how do we make a character for our comic. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to tell you the sad, sad story of Leopold Argen and the unfortunate events that led us to what he looks like now. You see, sometime around the early 1800s in France, Leopold Argen lived a very comfortable and happy life. Leo suffered some sort of terrible body disfigurement that forced him to wear large cloaks and capes to hide the body he was ashamed of from the public. He was often made fun of behind his back by friends and peers because of his disabilities and the way he looked. But it never bothered Leo. For some reason, the guy was one of the happiest people you'd ever meet. And not to mention one of the richest. I mean, the guy was loaded and generous. Now combine those two traits and you're going to always get people hanging around even if they dislike someone so much they want to scream. Leopold Argen lived in a big mansion, had 40 servants, beautiful lush green lawns on expansive grounds, and parties. Oh boy, he would hold the biggest and best parties. Leo loved to cook and to eat. Cooking was what brought Leo the most joy, even above being generous to those around him. But something weird started happening after a few years. You see, no one really knows who Leopold Argen was. The guy just sort of showed up one day, bought a mansion and started inviting the richest people in the region to his estate for parties and referring to himself as Count Leopold Argen. Nobody seemed to question how or where his money came from or that no one could even find a record of the family name Argen in the region who claimed to know Leopold. In fact, the guy was a bit of a mystery. And when you have someone who's starting to seem not quite what they appear, rumours start spreading. The first of these rumours was when a violinist who had played only two weeks earlier at one of Leo's parties never turned up for his next gig. The story goes that the young violinist was a stand-in for a much more well-known musician Leo had hired previously. But due to illness, that musician had to cancel last minute, sending one of his students to fill in for him on the night. People say it's the first time they had ever seen Leopold lose his temper. But people weren't fussed. It was a great night, great food. The music was fine. Not great, but fine. So when a rich guy loses it because he doesn't get what he wants, nobody thinks twice about it. But the missing boy seemed to spark something. He was from a wealthy family, well known around town and well liked. His disappearance also led authorities to other suspicious disappearances in the region of people who you would say weren't from such important families. The kind of people that might slip under the radar, so to speak. Field labourers, tradesmen, children, all of whom seemed to have some loose connection with Leopold Argen. Either they or someone in their family had recently worked for him just before the unfortunate disappearance of either themselves or a family member. But no one thought twice that Leo could be to blame. He was always the first to offer any financial help to the families as soon as he heard of their misfortune. But after so many coincidences, people started to wonder, could Leo have something to do with these tragic events? Despite all this, the parties continued. More lavish and entertaining than ever before, with Leopold always at the head of the table, laughing and talking to anyone within earshot who would listen to him talk about recipes and tasty delights from all over France. On the night of that final party, it was just before midnight, when the sudden crack of a flintlock musket brought the party to an end. All eyes stared at the startled face of Leopold as he sat upright in his chair, rigid. Then they noticed the black gaping hole where his left eye once lived. The story goes that by the time Leo's body slumped forward into his onion soup, the shooter had vanished and the party turned to chaos as the attendees in panic ran from the massive dining hall in search of safety, worried that they too would become the next victim of the shooter. 
but no other shots were fired that night, and no one else was killed. Leopold Argen died at the head of the dining table, and his attacker vanished into the night. The mansion later fell into disrepair, as no one wanted it due to the bad reputation, and it burned to the ground eight months later after the burial of Leopold Argen in a nearby cemetery. But the town's problems didn't end there. Locals would still on occasion go missing, the bodies never to be found. The townspeople were worried. Rumours spread quickly that something evil was happening in their town and it all had something to do with Leopold. Now at this point, things become vague. But by piecing together a few historical records here and there, we know that two of Leo's most trusted loyal servants had his coffin exhumed from his crypt in France, then without reason had it transported by sea to the United States where he was reburied and the body and the story of Leopold Argen was soon forgotten by the townspeople in France. And that is the story of Leopold Argen, who no one has heard of again. Until now. Over 150 years later, he turns up, and our hero has to hunt him down again, this time to finish the job he was unable to do all those years before. Okay, so this is a bit of a long way of saying backstory, is one of the important factors in making a comic book character. But it's with this backstory to the character that we're able to think more about what they look like, what they sound like, what they wear. The Leopold Argen we see in the webcomic is no longer the rich, aristocratic, rubbing shoulders with high society. So I have to think about who he is now. These are the things I thought about as I was developing the villain's character. The more details given to a character, the easier it becomes to make them seem real and fleshed out, even if that flesh is a bit rotten. Now you don't need all of those details to be in your story, but the more details you have about your character, the easier it will be for you to develop their physical look and their personality. And it will also give you more guides to understand their motivations for why they do what they do and how they would react in certain situations. For example, old Leo's pretty mad about that eye he lost, but not just the eye, he lost a pretty good lifestyle too. And since then he's been skulking around in the dark, eating whatever he manages to find in the cemetery he's now buried in. So when Jim Reel turns up, you can bet he's going to try and get his revenge for what Jim did to him all those years earlier. The backstory to each character helps me shape the story and how the two will interact with each other. Leo's backstory tells me why he now dresses in rags and why he now lives in an expansive network of caves under his crypt, carved out with his bare hands, as he is trying to replicate the once grand mansion he lived in all those years before. Everything about Leo now is a twisted version of his past that he is trying to somehow cling to, and that motivates his hatred against Jim Reel. So if you're feeling stuck and unsure how to develop your character, first give them a backstory, and see how much it influences how you create them. What are your thoughts about backstory? Do you go into details when developing your characters, or do you prefer to leave it as much of a mystery to yourself as to your readers? If you have any questions about what we're talking about today, let's further discuss in the comments. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching, and let's talk soon.